It's Thursday on your view. Welcome to the show. I am Morayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Okay, into good building. Good morning. Good morning. Looking very morning. colorful today. Ah, on the I'm shoes, the, shoes the headgear. Very I'm plenty, plenty colors. Pick up and it's good to many colors. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? I'm fine, I'm fine. I love the earrings though. Thank you. Like I said, everything. Yeah. And what's up? What's going on? What's going on? Oh, nothing. I don't even. I can't even remember any gist that I have. <laughs> you know, right. sometimes I'll have gist before then by the time you get on the show. We understand. 60 is not an easy age. <laughs> <laughs> <It's not an easy laughs> You're opposed to everybody. 60, yeah, 60 is yeah. 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 only Are you traveling <laughs> soon in time? Yeah. Not yet. Okay, so you're not still yet. hanging my, out. My grandkids are coming oh, okay. next oh. month, yeah. Oh, okay. They come in here often. I mean, these are Nigerian children. Though. Fine. Yes, daughter wants them to know home. Yeah, mm -hmm. she too wants to be close yeah. to home. That's fantastic. Oh. So, it's, oh, so it's so good to know that they are. And because she can work online, she can I'm come anywhere here and, and work. work. Yeah. So. Fantastic. Such flexibility from. Mm. How you doing? So, well, advantages of COVID, I guess. Yeah. How are you doing? How was Mom's okay. birthday yesterday? Ah, oh, mom said I said she was coming, I did not show up. But today is another <laughs> special day. Yeah, back to be back. It's a back to back celebration this month, you know in all spheres of life. Um, 10 years ago, I became a mother of two oh, amazing boys. Oh, yeah. So today the twins clock 10. And this morning I was just thinking, ah, man. Ah, so I know the old, you know, like <laughs> I have a 10 year old child, which means like- You have 10 year old children. I have, a, I have 10 year old children, yeah, they're twins. So, and I just remember, you know, you, how transient the pain of delivery is and how long this journey of motherhood is and I'm feeling very, very like I should be celebrating my children, but I'm celebrating myself. myself yes. yeah. It's 10 years of being a mother. I had no idea the sacrifices, the tears, and I know it's still a long journey to come. And I pray my, that I would see the cho my children yeah. fulfill God's destiny yeah. for their yeah. life, and I would they would make God proud, make me proud, and mm. fulfill. Fantastic. You know. Beautiful. Yeah. So your children, your mom's birthday first, and then your kids. Yes, my mom That's really a... wanted me to give birth. I said, like, I've shared this story several times. You know, she was praying that she should give birth, not just give birth, but give birth on her I birthday. I was in labor on her birthday, and, and she, she was, was so cool. sure that the children oh. would come on that day, but they did it. They waited till <laughs> this. <laughs> oh, wow. Interestingly, my that. daughter, <laughs> interestingly, my daughter and her grandmom mm -hmm. shared the same birthday. Oh, sweet. And then my son and my own grandmother, uh, oh. my, my grandmother, um, uh, he was born on the third anniversary of her death. Oh. So it's very, mm. their birthdays are very oh, significant in my house, yes. yes. How are um, you doing? I'm fine, I'm happy. We got lights for a very long time yesterday, throughout the night. See, I will celebrate every time we have lights because I know how I suffer. It's so, Christmas, so yeah. when you have lights, it's Christmas. So. Yes, it's Christmas, oh. so that's what I'm celebrating. And I hope that this continues and gets better. Yeah, uh, I don't have lights. Oh, you don't? Oh, you still don't have lights since that time. Yeah. Ah, you have the grid. You are not inside the equation. Me, me. But it comes... Eyes, like our collective head. No, no, no. It comes in for about a few hours, maybe two hours, three hours max, and goes off again. But, you know, that's it. It's just terrible, you know? My kids are just complaining. Like, mommy, when are we leaving this house? I said, take it easy. The developer has not finished. You know, like... You know? But they were supposed to finish. This best is all December. Mm. Then it was March. Now they say we should get them on that month. So the kids are like so impatient. Like, can't we just leave this house? And I know the way children are. Once they know, once, once they know yes. that's yes. the problem. They'll that be is on the, your case. Oh my lord. <laughs> I mean, I want to, when are we going? Is, yeah. it, like, is it this weekend? Like, when when does your rent expire? It expired on 31st. Oh, okay. wow. So we're already over, of March, yes. Ah, so we already have a be harassing you. No, 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 no. Oh. Ten years. Uh -huh. He's a fantastic landlord. I have one of the best landlords ever. I mean, I, I really wish I could just stay there because he's such a good man. I did yeah, he's a fantastic man. He maintains a house. He's a, he's a good man. You so know? are you bringing somebody to replace you? I, I don't know. I keep oh. the place. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm still thinking of just, yes. you know, having that place as an office or something. I don't okay. know. We, we might just... He's just a good, good landlord. I wish I could be a good landlord like that. <laughs> you will be. You, and then plumbing, he handles it, the floors, he's always maintenance, he's fantastic. You guys were good. I were good tenants. You paid your rent on time. Oh, absolutely. So he was able to do his part. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Let's go on a break. When we come back, we go through the front pages of, of the papers. You know, today's Thursday is just in all the way. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Okay, we're going to start with the nation. 
zoning Ohane Zilash's PDP as far as she falls consensus. Picture of the scene of a fallen huge billboard at Kudrat Abiola Way uh, in um, Keja yesterday after the rainfall. CBN finds four banks over crypto transactions. Dangote Adenuga Rabi remain on Forbes' rich list. Terrorists threaten to kill attacked train hostages. And FG lifts more COVID-19 restrictions. Okay. So we know the, um, the CBN has been has clamped down on crypto transactions. It's it made the news months back, and they froze a lot of people, a lot of um, um, companies who were dealing in cryptocurrencies had their accounts frozen. Now, four banks, despite the regulation, had allowed some transactions, crypto-related, scale through. And we always say that corruption thrives when everybody isn't doing their part. So, mm. CBN in curtailing this has fined those four banks 114 million in total. Wow. One of the banks 200 million, another bank 300 million, and all of this was done because one bank did not allow um, an account that had been flagged for cryptocurrency to continue its transaction, um, and they allowed transactions between crypto-related transactions take place. And so these banks have now, um, in fact, I don't know if the banks can negotiate the fine, but I think if, they, if the, the banks pay the fine, they would be more um, strict with implementing the rules, cutting across all corruption. No corruption can take place without the involvement of banks, because these transactions should be flagged in the first place. So I'm happy that the CBN is doing something to... So, I wanted yeah. to take the terrorists that threatened to kill the train hostages. Okay, go ahead. Are you going to take it? No, no, no. Are you sure? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Go ahead, YK. Because I didn't see, I didn't, I didn't read. Okay, I okay, okay. go ahead, YK. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, four suspected terrorists, they did a video yesterday and they claim, they, they said um, they're going to kill the hostages if their demands are not met. Mm. They didn't tell us what their demands are, but they said that the federal government know what they are demanding. Mm. So if they don't answer them, they will kill the terrorists. They released the uh, managing director. Um, Bank of Agriculture. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, he said because he's old and he has been begging them that they've released him. But, and he too is begging that the government should, uh, that there are many, many, many hostages. So please release them. Okay. You have a story. I was going to take the major headline. So I've been following up with this story with PDP. And obviously, we, know, we said yesterday at the papers when they said that um, Governor Autumn had, uh, who chaired the 37-man committee, had said that they were not going for consensus or zoning, they were going to throw open. But he has come forward to say he never said that. He never oh. said that to any, 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 any reporter. They were that reading right his now, body language. Yes, they were reading his body language. <laughs> However, um, Ohane Zindigbo has obviously, they came against the possibility that this might become consensus. They said that it's a political blunder and a betrayal given that Ndigbo has suffered most recently for supporting the PDP. Mm. Also, another contender, our governor, former governor of Ekiti State, Fayoshi, said that, I saw those are, um, going around for consensus. Who will step down for who? You asked me to step down. Consensus is undemocratic. So according to him, when it was the last election, they all, all, all of them from the south, stepped down when they zoned it to the north. That it's time for them to also step down and zone to the south because mm -hmm. they're not going to call them step down for anybody, and they don't want a consensus. They want it to be zoned south. And so, listen. He also, he also said he also said that um, the uh, PDP, the pe the people that want you to step down for them are the people who left the party and allowed the party to lose the elections last year, um, last time, and um, he named Atiku and Saraki especially, saying they are because of the loss of mm, uh, mm. the election. And I said that they couldn't, they can't, they, even win. Become... They, could, they can't even win from their own individual. Uh, <laughs> in, yes. so in the in the, in the in state, they couldn't mm -hmm. win. Couldn't um, win. They are in their the state. Won, won by 20,000 votes mm. in Adamawa state. Adamawa state. Moving on quickly now to the punch. Let's find, so we talked about zoning already. Let's move on. Pensioners threaten slow, uh, showdown with Fire Me. Abiodun Southeast Governor's retiree slumps. Lagos father smashes baby's skull. Warren's house blames evil spirits. Suspected smugglers kill Ogun customs officer, dump body in pit. COVID-19 test state protests Ghana's now treatment of Nigerians. Lassa fever spreads as COVID-19 cases drop FG list restrictions. Okay, which story are we taking? And uh, one more thing. Seem NIN deactivated subscribers want three-month extension enrollment centers congested. Okay. okay, the picture story, the Nigerian Union of Pensioners 
um, the southeast zone um, had a meeting and released a communique and they say that uh, for those of them in the southeast, their governors of, um, from that zone have a bad reputation for not paying pensions and gratuities. They said for a lot of them, um, their payments and gratuities are done in arrears. Some have not been paid their gratuity in 10 to 15 years, and their pensions are paid in arrears of um, six to three months. And, um, you know, they're just complaining that this is not in the Constitution. These people deserve their money and they should be paid. Um, they're different. This, the particular picture that we're looking at is of a man, of a pensioner, who at a protest slumped. But thankfully, he was quickly taken away by his family. He said he was a 90-year-old man, just protesting the fact that pensions are not paid. And he said a lot of them, as usual, we know the stories of a lot of them passing on because the money that they would have used to take care of themselves go to the hospital, they don't get that. They also say that as far as they're concerned, EFCC is conniving with these governors who steal their monies in billions, monies that is meant for pension payments in billions and get away with it. So really, when it comes to pensioners, we have to put our hands together and right. solve this issue. Right. This is a sad picture that we have Very to see sad every picture. time, yes. Very sad picture. I yeah. saw it. So I wanted to talk about the, the man who smashed his baby, baby's head. He, apparently, he was just sitting in the sitting room with his 17-year-old wife, got up and just smashed the baby's head. Oh, home. my Lord. And then he set the house on fire and then ran. And she... Um, um, alerted people and they came and put the fire out. They saw the baby. They found him somewhere hiding. And he says he's the evil spirit. He's locked up at the moment. Very, very, very sad. That's story. some kind of mental disorder. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely a mental disorder. Definitely a mental disorder. You have the story of the smugglers? Or which I story? have yeah. the story of the okay. presidential steering committee speaking to the okay. Senate. Okay. And in that conversation, they are decrying the treatment of Nigerians in Ghana. So the Nigerian, from the Ghanaian perspective, it's that a lot of Nigerians come into Ghana with, with um, COVID test results saying they are negative. But when tested in Ghana, they are positive. So because of that, there's been this harsh treatment towards all Nigerians traveling into Ghana. To the tune of 70,000 Naira per day is paid to isolate for two weeks, running into millions of Naira if you visit Ghana, you are isolating. This is West Africa to West Africa. And the um, conversation was now Ministry of Health should, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs should speak to Ghana. Our bilateral relationships shouldn't, this, we shouldn't be treated like this. However, the, the fact still remains, Nigerians go there with fake COVID tests. I travel several times, I've done COVID tests several times, and it's negative, and I always do my COVID tests. Why would people not mm. do mm. the test they appropriately? Need do the yeah, test right. now. Okay, we have to wrap up on this, but let me take the deactivated subscribers. So uh, a group, the uh, umbrella group says, I think it's the National Association of Telecom Subscribers, have asked and pleaded with the federal government to kindly extend the NIN SIM policy deadline for another additional three months. And this is because all the major telecom centers are very congested right now because of the deadline that was passed on the 31st, I believe. So the, right now, people can't actually connect their NIN to their SIMs, and they're asking for an extension because now the people know, Nigerians know, they can't call out anymore. Been, their lives were blocked. So you, you made your point. We've and got your to system the, cannot even carry the yeah, So please, Exactly. So please give us three months well, extra. My fear is that extension. if they extend it again, they will become lax. And they will not, because no. we had time. When, when there was a deadline before, yes. everybody was rushing. Yes. And when the government extended, everybody just relaxed. Yeah. Instead of using that time, time to, to go and... So we, let's start talk to ourselves. And now if they mm. extend it, please go and get your SIMs linked. Let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with the review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Moving on now to Daily Sun. Uh, Friday story, Kachuku joins ADC presidential race, dismisses zoning clamor. Saludo constitute truth peace committee. Buari signs executive order 11 on public buildings maintenance. 
Kadara military base attack, number of soldiers killed rises. Three killed others abducted as bandits attack Taraba. UK task federal government on incessant um, conflicts. FG counters Obasanjo on insecurity, blames PDP for worsening economy. Okay, which story? Yeah, before you take that story, I just wanted to talk about, it wasn't on the front page, but I thought we should just mention it, that Lagos State has locked the hospital, Medville, that we talked about yes. on Tuesday. Apparently, when they did their preliminary investigations, they noticed that the hospital wasn't registered and um, it was operating illegally. Mm. Wow. That's the, that's the woman who died. Her husband yeah, the came from another died, state. Yeah. Really sad. Very sad. Very okay. Sad. So, Kaduna military base, we took the story yesterday. We remember the sad story of the attack on Monday night. Mm. Um, sadly, they said the number of um, deaths had risen from 12 to 17, as five more soldiers who were injured had, had passed on. Um, there's also a video which um, was obtained, they say, by PR Nigeria from the military intelligence. We showed that even though these um, bandits came in their large number, that there was a quick um, response or intervention by the Nigerian Air Force fighter jets, and uh, a lot of the bandits were repelled because of them. All the casualties would have been worse than what we what we have right now. All right. So um, Governor Soludo has constituted a Truth Peace Committee, and that's following the sit at home order that um, was obviously was cancelled, if you recall. I, then this um, sister's home order was given by IPOP when Nam Dekano was incarcerated. <coughs> Excuse me. Then IPOP came out to say it's been cancelled so that the people of the, in that zone can go about their daily business. But some people masquerading as unknown gunmen, they're trying to enforce this um, <coughs> excuse me, sit at home order. And um, since they have been causing havoc across, uh, across that region. So Governor Soludo has been able to constitute this committee that includes um, Professor Chidi Odinkalu, um, Mrs. Bianca Ojuku, um, Charlie Boy, Mrs. And, and quite a number of others, prominent members, uh, prominent people within that region, are, are members of this committee, and going, their, their, their agenda is to identify the stakeholders and groups who have played critical roles in, in these agitations. What are their grouses? What are their demands? What role are they playing? And how can we therefore chart a roadmap? for reconciliation. So that's the um, task, and we are really hoping, wishing them the best, because that's the first step to, to consult with those who have been yeah, agitating I, and I, making things difficult for others. I think what, what he's done, he's picked up, um, he's picked uh, people Prominent. who are popular, yes. and who yes. they, they will listen to. Onye Kaun is one of them, you know? Yes. So... That's fantastic. Mm. Okay. Let's move on quickly to... the story of the president ascending to... Your best friend is also the executive... Who's my best friend? Bianca. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Oh, please, my dear, let's get serious. Slap everybody into order. <laughs> Our presidents are sent to um, an executive order. And the, the reason I'm taking this story is because what the executive order is supposed to do is to create, um, is, is to maintain buildings, public building maintenance. Understanding an executive order. Uh, that, that's exactly what I'm trying to understand. And many of the buildings, are, they need a facelift. So now they're going to be, every ministry and agency needs to quickly create, and I'm wondering, a budget, because obviously, when they say facelift, is that they will create a budget mm. that now, executive order will mean every budget for the, the buildings should look good. A lot of money goes into building infrastructure, infrastructure in Nigeria, and if we maintain by preventing damage, if we are careful with the handling of those things, we would call, it would save us a lot more money mm. in trying to do facelift. I mean, if we recall, I mean, what TVC used to look like before, when we came out in this, the new management, yes. they came in and they started planting flowers. I was like, what are they planting flowers for? Mm. And all this thing. But we have seen that over time, mm -hmm. sustainers, or sustainers of that have actually made the place look beautiful. Yeah. And when you come in, you feel like, oh, I'm coming to an office. So yes, you might have to make that cost initially, but the maintenance of it is also very critical. You know, priority, this is not the most important executive thing. Product. Okay, Vanguard very quickly. Oh, it's all part of it. Mm. Okay. PDP's open ticket presidential contest triggers uproar. NURT WD sacks MC Oluomo dissolves the Lagos Council. Nigerian-born student dies after eating cannabis sweets in UK. Oh, my God. AKT 2022, unknown men, uh, unknown gunmen attack Oni's convoy in Efon Alaye. Shaun, RCCG pastor Gandhi Olaoye, eligible to become next Oba, says the Laoye family house. Um, FG approves 12 new private varsities. Jonathan loses two security aides in auto crash. Okay, which story are we starting with?
So there's a young girl, um, age 23. Her name is her name was um, Damilola Grace Olakomi, uh, an undergraduate uh, business law undergraduate student at the University of Hertfordshire in the United Kingdom. She and her friend, a 21 year old, had ordered um, this sweet. <coughs> Um, gummy bears, Gummies. With, yes, with um, cannabis in it, and they consumed it. And immediately after, they were terribly sick. They were quickly rushed to the hospital, where the um, other friend, the 21-year-old, was released because she got better. But she um, suffered, and immediate, and she passed on eventually. They said her mother was beside her. They mentioned mm. that she was her mother's only child. Oh as gosh! Well. So really sad story. And. Um... Please, I need to just beg on up. You know, a lot of she parents down. send their children to um, study abroad. This one, the mother was even there. We need to just keep pulling the ears of our children, monitoring as much as possible remotely, because children will want to experiment. But we, these stories will help them understand where not, what boundaries not to call, cross. I think the most important part of this story is things that you have to eat. You need to be careful. Buy, don't buy it online. Mm. You don't even know where they are. You don't know their addresses. Yeah, but they knew what this was. No, 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 no. These things are sold abroad. No. <coughs> so they have gummy bears with these things. But well, probably these particular ones the had vendor. something and, wrong with and them. And will not have an address to, 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 go. Go, to, to go and catch themselves. Mm. OK, we have to move on quickly. So another story in Vanguard. The, the RCCJ passed a Gandhi the family. So um, one of the people from the uh, Mogalit family said that uh, Olawale Olawoye was saying that Pastor Gandhi is eligible, he's not a bastard, um, he's not brought from outside, he's a true son of Kakwe. I want Obumasha to be calm and reassured. If you, if you recall, there's still an ongoing tussle mm. between families saying that there are other people who are also qualified to be the Shahun of Obumasha and this back and forth. But they're saying that the elders are still talking and that um, Pastor Gandhi himself is also very qualified. And they, 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 um, they've assured members of Obumasha that this will be resolved as soon as the chairman of the screening committee um, 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 and in forms of what the decision of the committee is. Uh, I was going to talk about the NURCW, but is there any other story we've not taken that's interesting there? Okay, let's move on quickly now to the Nigerian Tribune. INEC estimates 90 million voters. Uh, NDLE arrests drug cartel queen in Taraba. Mm -hmm. NURCW sacks MC Olomo, dissolves Lagos State Council. COVID-19, FG lifts midnight curfew, large gathering restrictions. <laughs> <laughs> Saludo appoints Odinkalu, Bianca, and others to negotiate with IPOB. Again, FG promises victory against bandits. Um, judiciary must remain independent, says Afe Babalola. And Sarakilia Reconciliation Committee submits reports once PDP against bias in conduct of the primaries. Okay, so the NDLA, the NDLA have um, arrested a person who they describe as a notorious queen of drug cartel. Her name is Lami Maeha. Surname has been withheld. I don't know why she would withhold her surname because the others we hear of their names, surnames, the villages they come from, and everything. Them. Anyway, she's a 40 year old and she's into supply of psychoactive substances to different traffickers in Taraba State. They said that they had been, uh, she had been on their wanted list for a long time. They started searching for her since 2021 and finally they um, found her in one of the villages in Taraba State. Um, they talked about a certain person who had been arrested. Some of the suppliers and I mean the traffickers had been arrested and her name would come up. And they said there was this particular person who after being arrested and served jail term went back to his business with her ah. continuing to be his supplier. She's anyway, only 40. she's only 40. She's really been caught man. and hopefully would mean, you know, this is what well, I would say a, uh, you know, win for the war against drugs. So your, the government, sorry, <laughs> presidential committee, the uh, back, uh, presidential steering committee have lifted the curfew, the 12 to 4 a.m. curfew. They say since the COVID um, cases have dropped, dropped we can, but we, uh, people with comorbidity, mor Comorbidity. People with uh, hair should still stay wear away. masks and stay away from uh, crowded places. And we should all still be alert and wear our masks, but it's not mandatory. Just, <laughs> just, 
Well, we didn't know that there was still, there was still restriction. So we are all shocked. Okay, we have to run. Within this, we are shocked. Yeah. We must talk about our shock. We have to run. We didn't know that there was still. They had a convention. <laughs> Okay, yeah, six days. It might be never be. Let's go in a bit. That's all we can take. Everybody was wearing masks. <laughs> and he went through the night. Okay. That's all we can take of your review. That's what you wanted to see. Stay with us, we'll bring it back. <laughs>for staying with us. So join us now to discuss all we need to know about surrogacy, egg donor, and the intricacies involved in surrogacy is the fertility expert and director, Medburn Agency, Abiola Adewusi. Welcome to the show, madam. Thanks for having me. Surrogacy is, um, is um, I wouldn't call it a new phenomenon. It's, it's actually growing in Nigeria. Now many more people are looking for surrogates to help them carry their baby. But there's still this... Um, very gray area that hasn't been really properly um, um, planned out, uh, plain for people to understand because there's a lot of confusion. You know, who owns the child? Whose egg is it? We had there was a recent story we had about a young lady who had promised, I uh, mean, both her and her auntie, she promised to actually carry her auntie's baby. There's no written document, you know, and then um, now she had the baby, but her auntie did not. Uh, deliver on her own promise to her. So she refused to release the babies. And now the auntie is doing so much trying to use Interpol, different things, just to get this girl. The point is, what could she have done to prevent this? And what do we do? Who seeks surrogacy, uh, surrogate mothers? What do we do to ensure that we get our babies at the end of the day? Okay, thank you very much. And I'm happy to be here this morning. And um, I, okay, so surrogacy is multifaceted. First of all, you have to actually require the process of surrogacy for you to go that route. So it's not an option for you to just say, oh, I don't want to be pregnant and I want a surrogate to carry for mm -hmm. me. Yeah. So, so you would have gone through the medical procedure to determine that you cannot actually carry right. due to medical reasons okay. or multiple IVF failures right. that is to the tune of maybe five, six or more. And that's the time that the doctor will actually determine that you require surrogacy for stutters. And at the time you actually require to get a surrogate to carry the baby for you, the doctor is supposed to counsel the patient on the process. Okay? And in that case, the surrogate that is going to be engaged, usually in Nigeria for now, although we practice it all over the world, and surrogacy has gone to biblical days. Mm. You want to be sure that you're not doing a traditional surrogacy. Okay. Traditional surrogacy means that the surrogate <laughs> is the owner of the eggs. That's the traditional mm. surrogacy, okay, that dates back to biblical days. You want to be sure that you're doing a gestational surrogacy. That means you're going to go through the IVF process. Okay. They're going to get the patient's eggs, <laughs> fertilizer with the husband's sperm, right. and then put it into the surrogate. Right. Okay, so that's third party. Mm. Okay, so the couple's there, generating the embryo and having someone carry it for them. Mm. Okay, so. I, I like the distinction, which is great. It makes life easier for us. So, the, so we'll come back to the gestational one, the, but the traditional well, one, how do I protect you? Well, well, but it, it doesn't yeah. always, um, work. It, it doesn't always work that way because I've had a case where someone's egg prematurely um, wasn't good as at like she was 38 mm -hmm. and she didn't have viable eggs anymore. Mm -hmm. So for her to do surrogacy, she had to get donor Eggs. Okay, so that's another scenario. Okay, so I'm the patient, but I'm too old to generate my own eggs. Right. I can seek for donor egg, which will be totally separate from, from your surrogate. You're saying you must ensure that it's different from the surrogate so that there's no attachment. distinctly separate. Okay, okay. Yeah. Mm. So I get so it. The story that Morel um, highlighted um, 
obviously there was a problem from the very beginning because Correct. in that story she, at first she wasn't aware she had to use her eggs but eventually used her eggs so that in that case you would say that she is the legitimate mother of that child even well, though there was supposed to be an agreement that the child would end up with the Absolutely. Everything started wrongly with this particular scenario. If you're using a surrogate that owns the egg, she's the mother. Mm. Right. She's the mother. I mean, how, how can you slice it? She has a right. DNA, right. she has everything. But if it's totally different, then you can actually argue that. All right, so let's talk about the safety of this process. A lot of people who they see this as a revenue opportunity. Okay, I can, I can, I'm very good at pregnancy. I can you know, get a few millions if I do this. Um, how easy is it to go? Is it like a surgery? You have to be inserted. What exactly is the process to become a surrogate, to volunteer to be a surrogate? Okay, there are lots of processes involved in being a surrogate. So the fact that you've delivered children in the past does not automatically qualify you to be a ah. surrogate. You have to have the right mental state of mind to, ah. to be a surrogate. So there are processes involved. You have to be healthy. I mean, because you could have delivered two or three children and not be healthy, maybe with high blood pressure and things right. like mm, that. Sure. You want to be able to protect the health of the surrogate as well, in as much as you're trying to satisfy the patient's need. So as the doctor, you have to be able to identify the surrogate, make sure that they're healthy, make sure that they're in the right state of mind, make sure that they go through counseling, make sure they have the legal um, discussions that goes with it as well. Everything and this process, this uh, screening process is very rigorous. Mm -hmm. So if you're not patient, you're just you know coming, want to you know pop in and pop out. No, it's not for you. You have to be patient to go through the process, the screening process right. that takes you through as a surrogate. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the okay. I was just going to ask the um, for the mother, the surrogate mother. How do you? How does she detach herself from the child? Because She's the one that has carried the child for nine months. And she's going to have milk and yeah. all the things that go with having a baby. How, do you, how does she detach herself? OK, that's a very good question. And that is one of the downsides of being a surrogate. And these are the things that you discuss with the surrogate upfront. You have to. OK, so this is highly emotional. You're going to carry the pregnancy, and at the end of the pregnancy, when the baby comes out, you may hear the baby's cry, but mm. you will not see the baby mm. because the baby belongs to someone else. Oh These Lord. are the things that you will discuss mm. and make sure that they're comfortable with it before they actually start the process mm. because it is an emotional uh, journey. Right. Yeah. So, you know, you see the baby? You no. see the baby. But <laughs> do, do the surrogates, do you really understand? Because I hear that some of them change their minds at the last minute. Mm. So, some do. Okay, so, yeah. so maybe she was not expecting to have a CS, but now she has to have one. If that happens, what happens for her? Does the arrangement and the payment and the change? Yes, okay. does that change? Okay, so I'm going to state categorically that if you're putting a surrogate through a process and you do not specifically identify what can possibly come to play, mm -hmm. then you're not doing a good job. So she As should be prepared that there's a possibility oh, yes. that there will be a CS. There's a possibility. There's always a 50-50 probability. I mean, it can happen to yes, so anybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the baby might be in a bad lie mm -hmm. and it will be dangerous for you to push. So what do you do? You have to bring baby out. Let's come to culture. Comes to, you know, the culture, you know, acceptability of this process. People think, oh, it's not my child, or your mother-in-law is like, how can you get the place to come and carry your baby? What is that? You know, there's a lot of family religious pressure. Like, so as a woman, you're thinking, oh, I'll just have to wait till God gives me my child. I, I don't want to tell a to friend to or somebody to carry this child for me. Okay, but very good. I know our culture is uh, very peculiar, but I've, I will say we've come of age. Mm. Ten years ago, oh yes, I okay. So I think I've been in this Nigerian space for about fifteen, going to sixteen years now. When when I came back, nobody talks about it. It's unheard of. I mean, it's almost like you have to do hush hush, mm -hmm. and then you know, the, the, of course, the patient will have to do the bump and all that, you know, acting and all that. But now, as years roll by, I can tell you for free that it's changed totally. Mm. 
totally. You just say totally. I wouldn't say to totally. <laughs> you know why? I know why. You know why? Yeah. Because most of the patients that seek surrogacy talk about it. They come out and talk about it, and they tell their family members that this, what this is doing. what I'm doing. What I, what I, what I think about so my, uh, well, my thing is that there, there is a group of people in the AB class, you know, exposed, yeah, yeah. travel, come back, those kind of people in that six, in that circle. Maybe small there's okay, a so huge population of so Nigerians. So maybe that's the category. Is that the, yeah, that's, 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 yeah, that's, your, that's your little <laughs> bubble. That's just a, yeah. But there's a huge population of Nigerians who this can help. But they're not open to this option because they don't understand it. So that's where that question is coming. Yeah. So um, I, I wanted to talk about um, what she just explained because I know a few people. I volunteer for um, an NGO that takes care of people for ministries. They, take, they, they, they help people through this process, and we've heard many that when they consider this op option, they don't. When they share their testimony in church, they don't mention the process they used to get their babies, yes. and that is still. There's, because there's a stigma attached to it, like it's not God that did it when those kind of things happen. Mm. Then there's a category of, it is so expensive to do. So obviously, anybody you see doing it has a lot of money, exposure and all of that. How can we make surrogacy a bit more affordable to those who really want to have a baby but don't have that huge amount of money to go through the process? Is there a way to legally do the um, conventional, traditional surrogacy? Yeah. I'll let you okay. answer that question after sure. this break. Okay. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. All right, so before the break, you had a question. Um, let me let you answer. Go ahead, please. All right, so mm -hmm. to your question, it's multifaceted, okay? So we're talking about people that are not able to afford. What options do we have for them? Okay, so um, if you compare surrogacy in Nigeria to the rest of the world, it's still peanuts. As, as I'm telling you, as expensive as it is in Nigeria, it's still nothing. Mm. compared to the rest of the world. Mm. And that's the reason why we have most of our clients come from diaspora. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Because it's cheaper to do here. Because it's cheaper to do it here. Mm. Um, so, and you know, you start to wonder how much is too much to give someone mm. who's carrying your baby for who's you. Who's carrying your baby for you. But I mean, now, would you advise, if, if, if I'm someone in the lower class level and I hear of this and I'm thinking, oh, I can't afford it, but I can get my sister or my cousin or my one neighbor's daughter to come and help me do it. Can I come to you and see? You, I have you can somebody. actually do that. Okay. You can actually do that, but you have to be sure that the person you're engaging is okay, mm -hmm. mentally stable, or in all ramifications. The person must have had children of their own. The person must not have a need of having another child. You know, these are the parameters that you actually consider when you're going through, you know, the process of screening. Mm. So, so you can get a family member that is not going to charge you much, okay. but then they have to go through the screening process so that they mm. can be determined to be eligible or not. Okay, so there are some young girls now that I'm watching and thinking, hmm, a way to raise some money, maybe for school, to travel abroad, is... Is there a particular age that you may think is too young to, you know, to be a surrogate? And then do you f try and find out the reason why they're doing it? If it's just for money for them, do you think that would also make them eligible? Because this person may likely not have any emotional attachment to the child. Correct. So, yes, there is a particular age. You, I mean, you can use school age kids, university um, I don't want to use children or age, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, so group. 20, uh, 21? No, okay. too young. Even as okay. donors, yeah. Oh. Even as donors, too young. Yeah, so okay. so you, have to, you have to have had a child at least or two. Oh, wow. Oh. So you have to ask, Yes, that's a prerequisite. I, like I was going to ask, what about the patient herself? 
how do you get her attached to the baby? Because if, if you have someone who has a baby, someone can, maybe she's been trying for years to have her own baby, and then she now agrees to a surrogate. Maybe the husband stresses her and says, OK, let's do it. Because you want the baby so much. She now has the baby, but she cannot find Next. that attachment Next. Next. Okay. to the child. OK, so yes, we do have some patients like that. But you will identify that patient before you start the process. So the, they already know. Yes, and, and that patient would have to go through you know, series of counseling and preparedness for this. She has to be ready. She has to be. So this series of counseling and preparedness, how long does it take? It can take two years. <laughs> ah, it depends on the mind. individual. Because, you know, contrary to, like I know two families in, the, in America that I've stayed with that they, they did surrogacy and you would have no idea that these children were not biological. Oh, yeah. Like, there's, it, it, there's such strong... But they're biological. Believe they're yeah. Yeah. There's even one was biological. The second one was the one I was saying the story that... Uh, no, no, donor. The donor, donor it was donor egg. Yeah. Okay. It was just the, the son's husband's husband sperm. sperm. Yeah. But the bond, she, was, she, she, didn't, she wasn't lactating, but she was breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. She's the children are grow a bit grown ninety nine percent of the time they they bond. So that, that happens. Bonds. So you so mother who didn't carry the child can actually lactate. Oh yeah, they yeah. give how the yeah. power. How does that happen? <laughs> you put baby to breast or you induce. Yeah. It's hormones. Yeah. Ah, mm -hmm. right. that's you good news. That. Yeah. Bond yeah. with the so, child. Yeah. It's a good option. Yeah. I, think yeah. should I mean, do I mean, finally, I mean, we have to wrap up on this. But thank you so much. But is there any final information or message you like to share with us so that people know that? Um, this is an option that is available. We know this can be expensive, but it can also be affordable for those who have people who are willing to be surrogate. And that are just final words on this matter. Okay, final words is surrogacy is actually a good option when you're experiencing fertility challenges and you're not able to carry babies by yourself. And patients need to be open-minded about it and consider it as an alternative to achieving their goal of completing their families. Sorry to pause you. Yeah. I want you to talk to mothers, mother-in-laws, okay. aunties, okay. family members who don't understand it, and they 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 they, they don't give that support to this woman who is seeking for a surrogate to help her carry the children. That's her number one problem. Not not that she, she's decided. Really? But everybody around her is just so. Help me educate them in a few seconds, like what it is. Okay, to our mother-in-laws, our mothers, our sisters, our brothers, please. Understand that surrogacy is just another form of treatment to people going through fertility. Mm. Just another form of treatment. So, in other words, you, you have fertility challenges and you walk into the doctor's office and they're going to recommend certain medications to you. You're taking that medication to achieve the goal. So, there are different okay. options available. It's just an option. It's not a bad thing. It doesn't mean that the child belongs to the surrogate. No, the child belongs to the parents. And yes. so it's really no big deal. Mothers, in-laws, <laughs> sisters, pastors. <brothers>. Pastors. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh. yeah. But they don't want to give their in church, but they want to, yeah, they, they're so embarrassed about it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's rather unfortunate that we don't want to talk about, and it's a, it, WHO is considered it a medical disease, you know, fertility. So it's really no big deal. And if it's a disease, you have to treat it. Yeah, true. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. We really learned quite a bit from you this morning. Uh, we're going to wrap up on this. When we come back, move on to another topic. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So women go through quite a bit in life. And last month, we had celebrated International Women's Month, where we talked about various issues that women go through. Today, we'll be addressing one. And the fact that when a woman is abused most of her life, especially as a child, how does she break through and break free from that hold, that mental hold with her abuser? And how does she be able to make something of her life? Our guest today is a success story of one of these experiences. She's the founder, MDCEO of No Leftovers Scale Catering Outfit, 
Mrs. Ayodeji Magbukwe. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. And one of your most popular things is that you made the moment that Barack Obama ate. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, so I mean, that's something you're really proud of. Yeah, that, that recipe must be very, very, we'll come to that because we need to work our way up from how it started all the way to get to the point where you were at the White House. Mm -hmm. But share with us, growing up as a child, when you felt you were abused and, um, and it affected your life. Could you share that experience with us so that we can learn from these stories? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Wow, so hmm, it all started when I didn't even know what was happening. Mm -hmm. I just knew something was happening. I just knew that there was a secret that I was um, compelled to keep mm -hmm. that, that I, I, I dared not share with anybody, but I mm -hmm. knew that something was not right and um, I had no control over it. And so I grew up, um, I think it started from around age 10. And yeah. so I grew up knowing that there was something that happened at some particular time of the night because this abuser was living with us as a family member. Mm. And as I grew up, got into secondary school, I began to understand that there was some violation going on. But you know, I was so caged and it was unbelievable how it affected my education, affected my social skills, affected my relationship even with my immediate family. Mm. And um, you know, I tried so many times to speak out, but I was also such a troublesome child <laughs> that it was, it was, I mean, it was difficult for anybody to believe me. Mm. The few attempts I made at um, you know, saying, talking to somebody was rebuffed. I was like, you, just keep quiet. Right. Mm. And I remember there was a particular day. I mean, I was so intentional about you know, saying everything. But my mom was like, just go do what I have told you to do. And because my abuser knew that I was going ahead of him, he ran ahead to my mom and said, see, she's so lazy, she's always lazy, she doesn't want to do anything I tell her to do. And my mom just gave me a dirty slap and said, wow. will you go? And that was the beginning of my trauma because, you know, just knowing that the people that should or the person that should protect you was not understanding of what you were going through. Mm. I shut down, shut down in my academics. I didn't have any sense of worth, no sense of, you know, I just felt that I was, I was just there, just mm. barely surviving. And as I grew up, people would ask, what's your dream? What do you want to be in life? And I was like, anything. Mm. Yeah, because I just felt that, you know, I didn't have control of my life. You know, that anybody could just come and kick me around. All right, interesting. So, I mean, I, I, abuse is, a lot of women are watching right now. Many of them have been through the experience and they're still struggling. You were able to find a way out. They haven't been able to break through. Would you give us an idea of that point? At what point did you say, I'm taking my life back? So, you know, deciding to take your life back is one thing. Now, deciding to move on with your life where you can say I'm really thriving, I've owned myself is another thing. So when I was able to confront my abuser and said to him, no more, you know, that was one point. But I, it was a journey because this is something that had happened for years. And so it was now a journey for me to begin to own myself. I, you know, I began to fail, I began to, I struggled to come out of the dark hole. The more I struggled, the more the failures compounded. Mm. And then I was, I finished secondary school, I couldn't get into university, that it made it even worse. Everybody I knew, you know, university. and then I was being compared. I mean, my mother had such, she had great friends who had such, who had, who had brilliant children. And I was constantly being compared. My mother would go to their houses and then she'll come back. Have, have you heard that person's achievement? Have you heard? And I was just like so depressed. But then I began to, my life began to have meaning. I said, okay, okay, no, let me do this. So I ended up studying sectarial administration. Wow. My father was so upset with me because all my siblings went through university and he would, sometimes he would mock me and say, I, you're the only one with the typewriter on your head. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I, I, maybe because of the show, I get a lot of messages from people who've gone through trauma, like life, they feel like life have, has happened to them and they are unable to move on. You know, that idea of moving on. Somebody was like, I don't know when I, well, if I'll ever be successful. Like a message I got yesterday, if I'll ever be, I see you, you're so happy and successful. I don't know if I'll ever be successful. Um, I, I was abused as a young child. And in my head, I'm like, where would I even start from? Because mm. I had no idea what to say to this person. And if someone is watching and in that space, 
how can they shift from trauma to thriving through their life? What's the first place you should, I, I know you say it's the mind, but like, mm. what's the first thing they should do on that journey? Yeah, the first thing you should, should do is whatever is available for you to do, mm. whatever, even if it's not the high flying achievements of others, mm. whatever, if it is to sell bread, mm. and I'm very, very serious about that, just intentionally put all of yourself into it. Because that's what I did. I put all myself into sec being a secretary. And it took me 40 years. Mm. My turnaround didn't come until I was 40. I'm wow. talking about 15 years ago. Wow. And I'm like, I mean, I was a secretary for 20 years. Okay, I was just, I was happy that, okay, at least I'm, I'm working. Something. I'm earning a salary. I'm, 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 How does being a secretary take it to Obama? Long story, but I'll, I'll cut it short. Yeah. <laughs> for me, I just want to go back to, you know, I'm sorry what you had to go through, mm. but... You know, I would like you to tell us how you would have preferred for it to have been handled. Mm. Because mm. we have young girls right now who are going through this and probably getting the same treatment you got while you were going through it. What sort of, um, how would you want a parent or an adult who has noticed that the child is a bit different or has some things or has voiced out something but maybe not, you know, not so... Uh, not so to the point maybe they don't believe the person but yeah. at least the person has voiced out something how should it, that child be treated how should it be handled yeah. to give that child confidence it's important to have conversations with your children right at tender ages and that was what we lacked I mean that time when we were growing parents were very very far away from the children because of respect okay but when you when you have a, a good relationship with your children and you're able to have conversations with them you're able to be, come down to their level and really tell them that nobody told me nobody should touch my private parts mm. nobody told me nobody that my breast was mine nobody should mm. touch it I didn't know all of that mm. but thank God for today we have we are having such conversations yeah. with our children so if that had happened I would certainly would not have been in that hole mm -hmm. and I, if, I, if I was ha if I had the liberty to talk to my parents right. you know it wouldn't it wouldn't have happened are they alive oh yes they oh, are and how, how do you have okay so no no my mom is late my dad is alive but you know my turnaround came when my mom was alive, was alive. Oh, and I can fantastic. never forget her statement when she watched my video with Michelle Obama she, she had tears in her eyes. And this, my precious mother that had always called me the black sheep of the family mm -hmm. because of all, and I really was very, very troublesome. When I was pregnant with my first child, I remember praying, God, please, I don't want to have the type of child I was when I was oh, young. So it was, bad. I mean, she, yeah, but, but so, you know, I <laughs> wouldn't blame out. her. Yeah, but that was, that was what, how she, she, I mean, she didn't know any better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we're enlightened now. We have yeah. a lot of information, parental right. tips and all of yeah. that. So we don't treat our children as such. But you know, so by mo my mother, I was so, I mean, it was fulfilling to hear her say, Oluomo. And mm. Oluomo in my language mm. is the chief of the, ch wow. of the children. Yeah. So, yeah. So, wow. from, from being a secretary for 20 years, I mean, when I was about turning 40, I looked at my life and I said, no. I, I should be able to do something better. But I had voices in my head saying, a fool at 40 is a fool forever. Mm. And I didn't have a university education. Mm. And that was something that caged me even more. I used to be very intimidated when my siblings would come around with their friends to talk about youth service and everything. Mm. And I had no story to oh, tell. Wow. <laughs> so, I, you know, I, and, you know so I, I just felt I couldn't go any further without a university education. But at 40, I just said to myself, I will not listen to that voice that says the fool at 40 is a fool forever. Mm -hmm. I will listen to that voice that says, life begins at 40. Oh. Mm. Yes. So I didn't know what I was going to fall back on, mm -hmm. but I just said, I was just going, I was just going to die. Something, there must be some, if God has kept me all these years, then there must be something better for me. And that was how I resigned. I was working, the last place of work was Corona School Ikoi. I worked oh. there as a secretary and I resigned. Mm -hmm. I wanted to start a daycare center. Okay. That did not work. And then I sat back at home, started doing home, taking home lessons. Okay. And then one day we were so broken, the family. I cried to my husband, no food for anybody to eat. Oh. My husband gave me 1,000 naira. I looked at the 1,000 naira with tears in my eyes. But that day I made moi moi. Mm. And that was the turnaround. Mm. Wow. My sister-in-law paid us a visit, tasted the moi moi, loved it, asked how much I made it, how much I made it with. I told her a thousand naira. She gave me the thousand naira. I made it for her the next day. She took home to her, to her family. Her friend paid her a visit, tasted the moi moi and said, oh, oh my God. Tuta, I love, your, I love this moi moi. Can you give me more? And she said, no, I'm not giving you more. If you want moi moi, I have somebody who can make it for you. Bring one thousand naira. She will make it for you. And I made it for my sister-in-law's friend. When she called me, when she called 
called me to say, somebody has just given me 1,000 naira to give you. You know, when she told me to make more money for her, I had kept some back. I quickly ran upstairs, downstairs to my neighbor. I said, I have more money for you, just taste it. And she ate it. And then she ah. came running upstairs and said to me, please, where did you buy it from? Yes. I said, no, I made it. I, made it. <laughs> I said, give me 1,000 naira and I'll make for you. She gave me 1,000 naira. <laughs> so I made my worth 2,000 naira the next day. And from that point, I said, okay, there must be something about this, this moi moi. I took it to church. And at that, at, at that time in, in that Nigeria. church, yes, in yeah. that church, I, my husband was a pastor. And so when, when I remember the first time my husband said, go and say hello to everybody, tell to everybody that around you that they are blessed and they are highly favored. Anybody that came to me, you are blessed and highly favored. I have my money, you are blessed <laughs> and highly favored. When the children come to me and they say, oh, pastor's wife, I said, tell your mother, pastor's oh, wife has my wife. wife. <laughs> that was how it started, family and friends, until... I began to ask again, God, what next? Hmm. That was the question. Because when I saw that 1,000 naira turned to 50,000 naira over time, mm. I said there must be something about this money. And then I prayed and God said, take it back to Corona school, stand at the gate. And I was like, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Mm. I was just so convinced that God cannot, I mean, I said, I told everybody in Corona I was going to open the school. I was like, yeah, yeah, I was go back going to back to sell more money. Mm. But then I just said, look back and saw how far I had come. Mm. And I said to myself, I'll do this. And so I went to the gate of Corona stood at the gates and began to sh shout, my, my, for sale, my, my, for sale, <laughs> buy this, my, my, your life will not remain the same again. Okay. And you could see different reactions, but hell no. That's Corona equal you. Yes. I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> and people began to buy. So they bought for different reasons. Too. Some bought because they were curious. Knew you. Some bought because they were sorry for me. Mm. Yes. But I learned that it doesn't matter where, why anybody is buying. As that's long as you make buy. them buy, that's yeah. what matters most. <laughs> and that was how the whole turnaround started. At that same gate, I met a woman who asked if I could let know how, if I knew how to uh, make other meals. And I said, yes, I started making other meals. And then another woman came, gave me the opportunity to start feeding her staff in her office. Hundred wow. staff. That was what took me off the gates of Corona. Wow. And as I began to, as I continued to thrive, I kept asking the question, what next? And then I said, I want to go back to school. I don't have a university degree. And I saw the, on the pages oh, of a newspaper, okay. Goldman Sachs was coming into Nigeria to invest in women mm. who were in business but did not have business skills. And they were doing it in conjunction with the Lagos Business School under, under the Enterprise for Development Center. Yeah. And I applied. And I was admitted for the program. It was a scholarship program. Mm. And when we finished the six months of training, the Americans came to Nigeria and wanted to meet the ladies. And they heard oh, my story. Oh, my God. They heard my story and they were like, we want to come to your office. And I said, I don't have an office. I don't have an office. Mm. But then they came to my house and they saw me wrapping my moi moi. They saw the little space I had. They saw the zeal. Mm. They saw how I was hungry for the next level. They saw the support of my family. And they said, mm, we would like you to come to America to tell your story. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Delay. I was invited for the annual general meeting. When I got there, I was schooled. Me that I didn't go to university, they took me diff through different press se sessions. This is how you behave in front of the camera. This is how you talk. Yes, you, you do well, you speak nicely, but you know, your pronunciations here and there. They crossed my T's for, for me and dotted my eyes. And you know, I was really, I, my yeah. self-esteem was like... Up. Up. And there I was in front of the audience, speaking to at the annual general meeting. Oh. And the meeting ended and everybody, and there was a line, everybody was waiting to shake me. Uh -uh. I came back to Nigeria, kept building the business. And then I got another letter. President Bill Clinton would like you to speak at his program. Eh? What happened? <laughs> Goldman Sachs is in partnership with the Clinton Global Initiative. Right. And Clinton says, I need a woman who started from nowhere, who can speak to my, my, um, my investors and convince them that women are what they're investing in. Oh. Do you know any woman? And they said, we know oh, of this moi moi woman, woman hmm. in Lagos, Nigeria. That was how I packed my bags again and I went. See, I've got this bags. <laughs> <laughs> and I came back and I got another letter. This time from the, from the prime minister in Turkey saying the entrepreneurship summit is holding 
I mean, it's when next is global, so come my head. Yeah. Yeah. Back I mean, head. God next has been amazing. kidding me. Like I said, it's been 15 years from starting from four. Oh my lord! And with 1,000 naira. With 1,000 naira. I just came back from India. I'm the president of the association. On this matter. On this moin moin matter. matter. No left. No, Auntie, you're cooking this by message. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, you're having it for lunch. Ah, <laughs> I must. Oh, because I this moin moin. Moi. Oh, moi. Like, facts. Let's go on a break. Okay, anyway, I think yeah, Doctor. I doctor, I don't, I don't think. <laughs> doctor Margaret, are you there? <laughs> doctor Margaret, are you there? Oh, I'm so sorry. You okay, couldn't. Have a call. Let's go on a break. <sighs> we'll be right back. Yes, let's just digest this. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. We're still talking about this profound story of how starting a business with a thousand naira got you to the White House. YK, you're going to... Yeah, sorry. I'm going to take you back. I mean, your story is very inspirational and I love it. And a lot of Thank people you. on YouTube are just hailing you and say, <laughs> you know, that you're... One says you are a true motivational speaker. Best we've had on the show, according <laughs> wow. to Corey Michael. Oh, wow. But the abuse story mm -hmm. is... Did the guy ever get um, punished. caught or punished? Did your mother ever realize that your acting out was due to the okay, abuse? OK, thank you. So for a long time, even after I was able to say no, I didn't say anything to anybody. There was no point. Um, I was afraid at some point there were some issues that happened and um, that were that were, dis they were not connected to the rape and all of that or to the abuse and all of that. And I kept hearing, "Now be careful, don't drag the family name to the mud and all of, into the mud and all of that." So I was very conscious of that. Kept everything to myself. I didn't speak out until I got after I got married. Mm. And by that time, okay. you see, one thing for me, and I keep telling people, is that. Waiting for your abuser, it's good if the abuser is, um, is apologetic. apologetic or is um, made to call to make account or to, to, to take responsibility for what he does. But what if he doesn't? What if you don't even see him? You know, because at a point, some point in my life, I didn't even see him. I had to deal with all those issues. I had to f deliberately, number one, I had to start by forgiving myself. Because, I mean, we're five girls, we're three girls, sorry. Why me? Mm. So at a point I was feeling guilty that there must be there must have been something I did as a child that made him pick me out mm. as you know as, as as the one to abuse. So I had to forgive myself, and without even him being in the radar, I had to forgive him. I had to let go of my past because mm. for as long at some point I remember having a conversation conversation with somebody even before I got to that point. And I said, No, I cannot forgive. I cannot forgive. No, he has to be held accountable for what he did. But then the person said to me, So where is he? Because at that point I didn't even know where he was. Mm. And so I had to deal with that. I await. This is your life. Mm. Your You're life holding is at yourself a stand back. still. Mm. And guess what happened? One day I was at a function. And my profile was red. I didn't even know he was there. And then I came up, and I gave my, made my presentation. And as I came down, there he was walking towards me. And he said, oh, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But I just, I, I had pity for him. Mm. No longer, I, I just said to him, you know what? That person you abused is long dead. What am I saying? I am not saying people should not be held accountable. At the end of the day, if they're held accountable, if you don't deal with mm. yourself, mm. that person can be thrown behind bars. But yes. then, what's going to happen to you? Let your me take this call, then I'll come to you. So that's one. why, you know, I, 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 I'm so grateful to God that I could, you know, thrive and keep moving with my life. Mm. Regardless of him. Let me take this call from Olago. Okay, are you there? Yes, I'm here. You're I'm live. Here. Go ahead, please. Yeah. I'm a first-time caller. At Welcome the to the show, here. sir. This is the best interview I've ever watched on your program. Oh, wow. And as I'm watching it, I am encouraged. Mm. And I pray that all of us will have the touch of God, the way this woman has, it, has had it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All of us, I am encouraged. And please give us more of this interview. 
Yeah, I thank you so much. To, I want to hire you. This woman has a book I want to buy. She does, yeah. actually. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much. People would like to have a book. You have a book? Yes, yes, yes. So I have a book titled Lifted at the Gate. Ah. Mm. Because my liftings really started okay. at the gate of Corona. Wow. Each time I look back, I'm saying, God, thank you. I went, I obeyed. Because what if I hadn't gone to Corona? What if you were proud yeah. and felt this is shameful? Yeah. And then from the Goldman Sachs, mm. I went on for my master's degree wow. with the Manchester okay. Business School. Whoa. And, you know, even that, you know, being able to take advantage of opportunities, for example, I mean, I mean, right now, I am, I thank God, I convey different, you know, programs. Like we're having a program right now on, the, on Saturday the 9th. It's the... Ne what next conference and okay. you know the thing is you don't just um, you're, you're not just comfortable because you have um, you have overcome a particular challenge because life is full of challenges yes. I mean with this story does it mean I don't have challenges mm -hmm. no there's always, something next. there's always something and so you always get to that bus stop where you're asking yourself, is this all? Yeah. Okay, so I was able to overcome this at 40. Okay, when I turned 52, I still had those questions. I was like, God, I'm 50, I'm 50. What's going to happen? You're not 50 now. Oh, I'm 54. 54. What? <laughs> you don't look a day after 30. Thank you. Oh, wow. So I'm like, hey, sit the right I'm like 60 is almost here. Yeah, God. <laughs> what ah, next? What you, next? So that's why I love about your story, you know, in Nigeria especially, mm. they talk about the fact that we have a huge young population. Mm. So you hear a lot of stories for youth empowerment, mm. encouraging youth to be engaged. But the, the truth is there are also so many youth who have uh, grown older mm. and never <coughs> had that motivation, that story to help them. And they found themselves at 40, at mm. 50, and they're thinking, this is it for me. Mm. But your story is talking to that group of people and saying Absolutely. that there's still time to live your dreams. Absolutely. You know what, what, what I like about the story? You see, it, it's, we can't, I, I, don't, I don't like to start from the 1,000 Naira women. I like to start from the fact that you found the job of a secretary, mm. yes. which wasn't a big deal. Mm -hmm. And you were consistent. You stayed on it. Absolutely. You, weren't, it was, you, you, you didn't say, oh, because everybody else is doing something else. You stayed there. And it was by staying there for so many years, eventually asking for that what next. You were able to have the opportunity to go back to Corona School, which is where you're a secretary. Yeah, yeah. Right? So you were doing your, your diligent at, at that work. Yeah. And with that place, you're diligent at that God still used to give you that, um, that, the, the, that gate experience yeah. that you had. Yeah, and you know what? All of these mm. journeys that we go through, mm. at every point, whoever we, people we meet will become relevant even as we climb the ladder. Mm. So, I mean, being a, being a secretary was not a waste. Mm. I mean, there were things I learned and that I still apply now. There are people that I, I met then wow. that have become very, very relevant. Oh, wow. They've been mm. Because you meet everybody when you're the secretary. Yes, and, uh, and you know, how you treat people along the way, yes. mm. you know, also matters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm grateful to God that, so that, that's why I, I tell people, and that's, let me go back to the Thrive Conference, the What Next Conference happening this Saturday, mm. where we have, we're having a group of, we're having a gathering of women, mm. and we're having women who have gone through different seasons of their lives mm. come talk to us, how they've been able to overcome the different challenges they've encountered. I'm going to be speaking also, you know, because you find out that at different seasons, you go through different things, mm. and how have you been able Love to it. come out of them? We need to keep talking. Now, you talk about the young people. I keep saying to people, regardless of how old you are, the day your morning starts is the day you realize that, hey, wow. I can actually do okay. something. You can, you can start at 60 for you, some. You can. Let me take this call from Farouk. Farouk is been holding. Good morning, Farouk. Are you there? You're live. Are you watching TV? Farouk, are you there? Yes, I'm yes. here. You're live. Go ahead, please. Good. good. Uh, my name is Farouk. I'm calling from Kaduna. I'm a yes. first time caller. Welcome to the show. Uh, I'm glad to be part of this program. I always watch your programs. It's very uh, uh, exciting and enlightening. I must be honest with you. The guests you are having mm -hmm. at the studio right now, honestly, I, 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 the, the moment you begin to talk, I, I kind of reflect my life. My life all is a replica of those. Uh, the part of the, uh, the abuse was not there. I, I, I actually uh, had my life lifted at, at the age of 36, 37. I don't know if there will be a way. Uh, anyway, I'm a chartered accountant um, from the Institute of Chartered Accountants in Nigeria, I'm an FCA. 
I don't know if there will be a way to link with this lady. Um, we need people like this to, to use as a role model to speak to our youth, our teen youth these days. You just discovered that the way our youth are going to social vices is just yeah. so uh, astronomical. Right. So we need people like this from time to time right. to be at the forefront, at, exactly. at the vanguard of speaking to our youth, at seminars, at workshops, at schools, at maybe talk. Thank you so much, Farouk. I mean, I mean that's yeah. very, very profound. Mm -hmm. It goes. Okay. Okay, okay. So, okay. see. Any question? No, I have. <laughs> I have to say something. Um, the the atmosphere now mm. in Nigeria is there's this atmosphere of materialism. Mm. Our success is defined by how much money we have and how much money we can spend and spray and how much it is of it we can wear. Mm. And yet, with all of your success, I see you know modesty. Mm. What is success exactly to you? What what is it that in all that you have achieved that really in your heart is what makes you happy, content, and you can say, yes, I'm a success? Yes. Thank you. Somebody asked me a similar question, but this is the way the person asked, can you have it all? Okay. And I said, you so. can have it all as long as you can define what is your all. What is all? That's now, the way you repeat. Here I am at this level. What is my focus? I can be looking at somebody who is able to travel every month and say, I don't have it all. I can't travel every month. I still have to do budgeting, okay? So your definition of all and your sincerity to your needs, because it's not everything that you want that you actually need. Yeah. So what is it that you actually need to move from where you are to where you ought to be? Oh, so I have two children. I've been married for 29 years. And at some point in their lives, they needed me wholeheartedly. I needed to be there for them. Right now, they don't need me. And so I'm able to define how I order my life. So it's important to be real with yourself. And that's what we're talking about on Saturday at the Divine Event Center, Obanikoro, Lagos. We're talking about how to be real. For as long as you're chasing materials, you will be chasing shadows. Mm. I keep saying to some, something to myself. Sometimes you go to shopping, shopping. You, you have maybe you have one thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and then you've budgeted it. You've, budget, you've made a budget that mm, I only want to spend seven seven hundred dollars, and there's this pair of shoes, <laughs> nine hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> you have one thousand dollars, uh, so it's okay. You can actually buy it. But everything else, you're going to ask yourself, please do. do Good things end in the market. They no. finish in the market. No, they I keep telling myself, it when I go shop, there. they will be there. Better. And there will be better things. So why not wait? I like what the Englishman says. The Englishman says, the patient dog, although people are contending same, against yeah, that. Same, so. it doesn't. It's, but it's, yes, in Nigeria, but that we content. Con we content. Con content really. Because in Nigeria, they say the patient dog. So it's it's nothing. Not That's not true. Let mm. me take this call from Amau. Amau, are you there? From Aja? I'm here. You're live. Go ahead, please. All right. I mean, the last 15, 15 minutes has been the best training I've had you know, for a very long time. I'm here listening with my children. I'm wow. like 103 years old. Children. You know what I mean? Um, I, will, um, I will employ the, the woman to encourage our young people. I mean, we need people like this to talk to people. You don't have to go to Harvard to get some of these things, you know, down into these kids. I mean, my kids are just... So, 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 so inspired right now. It's oh, inspired. What fantastic. Is inspired the kids are so inspired. I'm not excited. Even me, I've learned so much from her. Well done, madam. Thank you so much, Mr. Maofo. Yes, you're going to ask me. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Waiki. Yes, Biliki says, your guest is courageous. It, it takes a great deal of courage to reach a point of acceptance and forgiveness. Mm. Andrew Stretham says, the woman is an inspiration. This woman is an inspiration. It's very moving. I love her. I love calling her the Moi Moi lady. <laughs> there should be a film about her. Yeah, <laughs> True, there should be. There should um, be. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, you. You've done this conference a few times, yeah. and I always tell people to attend because you. There's nothing that can inspire you like being listening over and over again. I, I see people complain about their life or spend their weekends at parties mm. when you can invest that <laughs> weekend into. No, 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 it's not a dis. Mariah's <laughs> all through the well, week, so she deserves to <laughs> party on weekends. But some people know that that weekend is an invest. It should be an investment into self. Yeah. And so I'm happy about um, the conference. Can you tell us a bit more about um, 
because because I know people are watching and they want tools, and some of them are watching in a way that they cannot come for the conference this weekend. They are not in Lagos, um, but they want tools. They want they, they are listening to you and thinking, is this ever going to happen to me? Yeah. And if somebody is thinking like that, what should the person start thinking rather? Yeah, thank you. So we're, I'm going to start by saying it's the What Next conference that is powered <laughs> by the Grace Ladies International Business fellowship so go on instagram at grace ladies international you see all the details there and it's at the um at divine event center Obanikuru. you just register when you register you if you can't even come physically you can join online but you must register and so one of the things that we emphasize on is please be yourself be your authentic self oh. don't compete don't don't com don't feel you're in competition with anybody okay, and you know a lot of times we say these things, we don't really mean it, you know. Look at life and see that there's nothing you can do by your power that can change some things. So why don't you just align with whatever God has provided for you mm -hmm. and make the best of it. And one of the things I also say is that why do we listen to people? We are going to be having amazing women like Joe Audrey Ezebo, we're having Dai of Benjamin Lani, we're having Just Imo. Who are going to, they're going to be talking to us about their journeys. You have to listen to people if you want to get to where they are. What you do not love, what you despise, you can never attract. And that was one of the things that delivered me. You know, there was a time that I would look at people who were doing well, some of my friends who were doing very well, and I'll be very envious, very jealous. And I'm like, it's because you've had the best of opportunities in life, that's why you are like this. But I realized that for as long as I de despise them, I could never get there. And we also encourage that, have a strong support system. I must acknowledge my husband, by the way. I mean, before we got married, I told him about the abuse. And, he still went and I was afraid. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was, I was so scared to tell him. And he said to me, I, uh, <laughs> that's not you. That person is gone. This is the new you. So I must acknowledge his support. But there's women who say, but I don't have my husband's support. And we say to them, build a support system. You can get support in your sisters. Mm -hmm. Don't belong to people who say women don't encourage women. Yes, mm -hmm. we know in some quarters, but look for, there's, we have a lot of women encouraging yeah, women now. So look for a company, look for a tribe, a tribe that you can be true to, a tribe that you know will inspire you, will not put you under pressure. That's one thing. Some people are not even put under pressure. They pressurize themselves. Yes. And so that's, that's why you start from having a very, very healthy self-image self of yourself. I love what you guys are wearing. It doesn't, doesn't diminish me in any way. <laughs> so you have to get to that point that you're loving people. You're appreciating the differences um, you know, amongst you. Mm -hmm. And then you're very comfortable in it. your skin. I love it. I absolutely love this. I love that's it. why I love this because, you know, I don't find a lot of people that talk like you. Mm. One of my frustrations in life is that I, 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 when I see... I see a lot of plastic mm. conversations out there. Mm. I go to a lot of events and conferences. I'm there just because you have to be it. there. But it's, I'm, not, I'm not getting it. I'm not con con connecting. I know what you mean. Conversation is just not it. Mm. No. But it's how, when I see people that, that are real and true and just real, it's just totally refreshing. Let me take this call from okay. Jared. Jared, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here You're live. Go ahead, please. I have tested the moi moi. Oh. Hey! The moi moi is great. I actually um, um, stay or live um, not too far from um, from um, one of our outlets. It's somewhat um, very close to Corona. Oh. And I think what is most significant in all of this, you know, I, I actually, as in, like, I know I visited the uh, uh, outlet to Eleni, and um, she um, she exudes so much. Um, um, She's, she's, she's very, very humble. Mm -hmm. And getting to hear her story today, I think like I really, just hearing to hear her, her story, I think I kind of relate to the person that I see. Because wow. just seeing her, you yeah. would know that she had, um, she's from such, you know, background. She's been exposed to all of these, you know, mm -hmm. all of the things that she has shared today. I think what, you know, what is striking all of the things that she has said, which I, think I want to believe, you know, I think like inspired me, but then like inspired me a lot. Was the fact that she went back to Corona, I think like where she used to be a secretary. You know, screaming, my my day here, my my day here. As in like the people, as in like you know, as in like the girls, as in like the youth of now, as in like us, so to say, as in like going back, as in like and you know, for us, and I rep my rep, you know, yeah. protect my rep. I know if you go back, protect my exactly. rep. Exactly. So it serves as you know, mm. a huge inspiration to a lot of Thank people. Thank you so much, Gerald. Thank you so yeah. much.
You know, Mariah. Um, yeah. I, I think, sorry, I, I was just going to say, I think what people see in you from the callers and from what I'm reading is kindness. Mm. But you are actually, you're not just a successful person or a success story. You are a kind person. Mm. So that is what draws people yeah, yeah. Yeah. to you. And mm. you know, that, that's good. That's where I was going at, you know, with also what Mariah said. Mm. So now, some of the values that I, mm. growing up, I thought were values. Mm. I see that people have thrown them away or mm. diminished. And then if you try to imbibe those values, you're termed, you know, you're not smart enough, mm. you're not ambitious, mm. you're not, you know, out there. That's why you would rather choose kindness mm. or be patient mm. Mm. and things like that. So really, you optimize, like, all these values mm. and yet you're successful. And I just feel that children, younger ones that we tell about these values mm. can see what it means in a person. So thank you so very much. Thank you. Our last caller talked you. about outlets. You have outlets? Yes. Oh, yes so you sell yes. them and so you're still oh, selling so, so much. We've grown, we've grown beyond. Oh, tell me about that. Group. Yeah. How so, that? I mean, okay. So I remember. So we, we, we from, from my house, moved yeah. to an, um, a location and then to another location. And then we got to a point where we, I just felt we need to expand this thing. And I went to my bank because I was doing well. I mean, I'd followed all the yes. business training, had a business account and all of that. And I said, I need a loan. I need to expand my business. And they said, OK, if you have 70 percent, we'll give you 30. And I'm like, hello, if I have 70 percent, I won't be <laughs> But guess what happened? I got a call. I got a call from the US, you know, from, from EDC. The, the, the Goldman Sachs had gotten in touch with them. And they said, OK, so it's International Women's Day. The White House is looking for two women. One who's been able to access a loan, and one that the banks have said no to. <laughs> Imagine! <laughs> oh my God! Oh my Lord! So God was just looking for everything. That was what took me to the White House. Not my power, not my mind. Look for it. So the, the rejection was the a rejection. blessing. I'm telling you. Yeah. So the mail was just like I was rejected. Yeah. It. <laughs> and, and I was, I was like so sad. I was like, my goodness. So what am I going to do? And they just said, so if you, have, so you have. I said, this is what the, my banks told me. He said, okay, Ayo, we want you in the White House. Hey, God <laughs> of Jesus. <laughs> Jehovah. Absolutely. So that's how Obama. <laughs> your way. Well, that was not how Obama ate my money. That was the first trip to the White House. Oh, so you've gone to White House President. So hey. go ahead, calm down. Hey. Hey. <laughs> so now I got another letter. After that, I got another letter. Okay. Now it was the inter the United States of Women's Conference in America. Okay. United States of Women all over the world. And again, they were looking for a woman that will that's represent amazing. Africa. Yeah. Raised from grass and all yeah, of that, yeah. and they called me. The authentic. I, I was there. Over 5,000 women in the hall. Wow. I was seated. I mean, Michelle Obama was there and all of that. And then we had a dinner for her. And before I left, they had said to me, We'd like to serve Moi Moi at dinner. I'm like, Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yes. So, show us your processes, send us your recipe and all of that. And I did. I said, Can I bring leaves from Nigeria? I said, No, 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 no. You know, can't do that. We'll do it. So, we. We, we arranged on how to do the moi moi, how to prepare the moi moi. And moi moi was served at dinner. And guess who was the guest of the day? Michelle Obama. Ha. Before, I, le before yes. I left Nigeria, I actually, my husband was taking me to the airport. And I just said, wait, my children were there. I said, please, can we kneel down? Of course, my, my son was like, oh, she has come oh, with come a drama. Mm. I said, please, can we just hold hands? Pray with me that I want to meet Michelle Obama. Whoa. And we prayed. And when I got that information, so when I got there, they said, Michelle Obama is going to be there. And guess what? We want to give you the honor of introducing Michelle Obama. I died. <laughs> and there I was in the, the green emotion. room yeah. with my tray of moi moi yeah. in America. Hey. Hey. You know, there's something I love. There's, one, there's something I say every when I When I got in touch with that word, yeah. I rise and shine. It's in Isaiah chapter. I know this is not a church setting. It doesn't Isaiah matter. chapter Please 60. I rise and shine. I, 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 I've, I've confessed it this morning. Oh, for over, over Isaiah Kini, Isaiah Kini. Isaiah chapter 60, 60. 1 to 22. <laughs> 1 to 22. Well, I will confess it every day. Amen. I arise and shine. My light is come. The glory of oh, God yes. is risen upon, upon me. me. Darkness covers yes. there. Oh, yes, yes. I confess I it every day. Gentiles come to my light. Kings to the brightness of my rising. When I stood in that green room with my mama in my hand, waiting for Michelle Obama, I said, I arise and shine. Mm. Mm. And there came Michelle Obama hey. saying, Ayo, I like oh, you. Mention your name. Mention your name. <laughs> Ayo, you are an inspiration. Oh my I God. Michelle, she said, yes. She hugged me. Oh God. <sighs> and then she took the moi moi and ate. It's wow. Said, oh, it's a I mean, so when I, when, you, when I remember such experiences, I'm like, mm. God, 
what is there to not, and please, may I tell you, I wasn't a nice person. I actually wasn't nice. When I was in deep pain, angry, envious, and jealous, mm. I knew that there was no way I could rise with that attitude, with mm. those attitudes in me. I began to pray, say, God, please help me to be kind. You Very know what? Good. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, help me to be fruit of the Spirit, of love, spirit. joy, mm. peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, mm. those nine. Mm. Yes. I always pray that help me to be kind, help me to be loving, help me not to think myself more highly than I ought to. Mm -hmm. There are people, more better, people that are better than me, not, not more knowledgeable than me that have died. So what are we talking about? Mm -hmm. You know, so all of this, I mean, they keep yes. humbling me. And we're out of time. And this is where we No, are. we're not. <laughs> yes, we are. We're out of time. <laughs> Please, <laughs> permit me to sing this song. <laughs> I will receive a letter of joy because a this letter should be getting from me. <laughs> from from our, 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 our But honestly, I think I joined the story. rest of our viewers and the Same viewers of the you. Well done. Well done. Well done. We love the story Thank from you. that how small you started all the way to how the opportunities came yeah. and how you stayed grounded yes. in all of this. Yeah. Thank you so much for being an inspiration. Thank you. I would love to attend that wedding. And I, um, that's our yeah. yeah. this weekend. I hope many people too also attend Grace International. so that you. you know we can learn we from can other learn. women like you. Mm. you know, and I was so excited that the names you mentioned, I don't know those names. Yes. I like that. I like the fact that there are people that I would love I to know. To you know, because we used to the usual suspects, you know, yeah. but when we hear new names, I'm like, you know what, I got to know what this person is going to. So that's fantastic. Thank you so much Thank you. for being on our show. And it was, it, was a, it was a pleasure having you. Thank you for That's having me. That's all we can take. Mike, you want to see anything final? No, I'm just, your, your story has overwhelmed me. Thank I'm you. happy for you and God bless you. Amen. <laughs> Thank you very much. The creator Thank bless you. you. Okay. <laughs> all right. Done. That's Thank all we can you. take. Yeah. Have a fabulous day. <laughs> Well, There's one brewing hot topic on social media. I can't wait. I won't tell you about it. Tomorrow, I'll see you. <laughs> see ya later. Have a great day. Bye.